and welcome again to Who is Jesus? And we're looking through the life of Jesus as told by Mark in his writings. But it's more than just looking at mm. some old writings. Yeah. We know that the Holy Spirit will speak to us and to you as we look together at Mark's Gospel. So I'm going to ask Keith now to mm. read to us Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Jesus forgives and heals paralysed man. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralysed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the man lowered the mat the man was lying on when Jesus saw their faith he said to the paralyzed man son your sins are forgiven now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralysed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Wow, what a story. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But true. Mm. Amazing but true, as the saying used to be. Yeah. You see, when people began to hear about Jesus healing people, they immediately turned up in great crowds. Even today, mm -hmm. if we knew that Jesus was here and healing people, we'd be around. Yes. But in those days, even more so, mm. no doctors, no hospitals, nowhere else to go. Well, I say no doctors, few doctors. Mm. And then you had to pay huge sums to get yourself seen and dealt with. So people crowded around. Now, Jesus wasn't there as the healer he didn't build i'm here as the healer jesus came to share the good news of jesus yeah. well to share the good news of the mm. kingdom of god for us that's jesus but for him it was to share the good news of the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is among you wow. he started his mm. preaching by saying repent mm. for the kingdom of god is here yeah. And that's what Jesus was teaching, and he was teaching about how to live in the kingdom of God. And these four men turn up with their friend who yeah. is paralysed, mm. and he's on a mat, and they're holding this mat and carrying this man to Jesus. When they got there, there was a slight problem. There was too many people for them to push through. And in those days, as today... People weren't giving way. You see, they weren't British. They didn't line up in a queue. <laughs> they were all pushed around the door and they were shoving and waiting and seeing and listening. And they weren't going to leave way for these people to get through. So Jesus must have been a real powerful man. Yes. It attracted to do. huge yes. crowds yeah. Um, yeah. around wherever he was 
uh, wherever he was known to be. Because wow. um, that's why Jesus quite often went away quietly mm. into the wilderness areas to pray and to seek his father. Because there were such crowds mm. wanting to know more about him. So if uh, we want to know more about him, we've got to go away and seek his face to move in that same power. That, oh yes, if we're going to follow him fully, we yeah. need to spend time seeking him, well, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So these right. four men turn up and they can't get in through the door. Mm. Now, for some people that would be, oh well, we better go home. Mm. But they hadn't got that man they hadn't got their mentality. <laughs> mm. They thought, right, we need to get our friend to Jesus. Yeah. Now of course houses in those days aren't British houses with their roofs. No. They were flat roofs. So they went up and often there were steps on the outside of the house and they used the roof for all sorts of things. Yeah. So they went up the steps onto the roof and they began to tear away not bricks like we would have, be like but grass roofs, grass roofs yeah. I would yeah. think. Yeah. yeah, And they tore away and made a hole in the roof. You can imagine, people are now doing this because there's something happening. And they lower the man carefully down to Jesus. Mm. And then the fun starts. You think it's exciting so far, you wait to what happens next. They put their faith into action. These four friends, they yeah. believed that Jesus could help their friend. Mm. They didn't stand outside and say, we believe Jesus can help our friend. They said, we're going to get our friend to Jesus, who will then help him. They must have been really desperate to... To get in there. There was and, no other way for them, for their the, friend to be healed. And the there faith was no that other they way. had to do They it. had wow. faith. They said, yeah. if we can just get our friend to Jesus, yes. Jesus will do something wow. about it. Wonderful. And that's the faith we need today. Yeah. It's not got to be huge in the sense that I've got to do something incredible, mm. but it's got to be the sort of faith that says, whatever, I'm going to get to Jesus. And that's what these men did. Now the fun starts. The man's lying on the floor, paralysed. He's not able to get up. And Jesus looks at him. And he says, he sees the faith of the friends. And he says, he doesn't say, I'm going to heal you. He doesn't say, you look to be in a mess. Let's see what we can do. He turns to this man and he says... My son, your sins are forgiven. Wow. Now... So he never touched him. He, he, he didn't do spoke. anything. He just spoke to him and he wow. said, Your sins are, are forgiven. forgiven. Yeah. He didn't say anything about healing. He didn't no. say anything about his paralysis. Mm. He dealt with the most serious situation that this man had. Yeah. He was paralysed. He couldn't walk. He couldn't get about. But that wasn't the thing that was really at the centre of his problem. Mm. He was unforgiven and he knew it. Yeah. And so Jesus dealt with the thing that was troubling the man most. Yeah. And he said, your sins are forgiven. Wow. Now that put the cat among the pigeons <laughs> in a very real mm. way. Because all the religious <sighs> leaders round and about said, yeah. you yeah. can't do this. Mm. You can't do this. Only God can forgive sins. And they were right. Only God could forgive sins. Yeah. But what they'd not realised, or at least what they wouldn't accept, was that Jesus is God. God. Yeah. And this yeah. is one of the proofs. Yes. People say to us, you can't find in the Bible a verse that says Jesus is God. And you can't in those words. But you can see many examples of where Jesus proves yes. that he is God. Yeah. And this is one of them. And they say to him, well, actually, they don't say to him. Like most of us, they say it to us themselves and they say it to each other quietly. But they don't face the person they're challenging. They're yeah. Uh, it's that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. 
What's he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. He knew yeah. even what they were thinking. And he said to them, why do you question in your hearts? It's, is it easier to say to the paralysed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand, pick up your mat and walk? Now, for all of us, it is easier to say to somebody, your sins are forgiven, mm. than to say to somebody who's paralysed, get up and walk. But Jesus was underlining the fact yeah. that yeah. he is God and has the authority and power to forgive sins. Wow. And I want to say to all of us today, now, whenever you listen to this, that Jesus still has the authority to forgive sins. Yeah. Sin is the problem for all of us. Yeah. Sin says, I am going to do it my own way. I don't need you, God. I'm in charge. Mm. I'm in control. It's all about me. Yeah. And that's the thing that eats us up inside. That need to be me. That need to be in control. Yeah. That need to have all things under my authority. And Jesus says... You can be forgiven for that and you can be restored to right relationship with Father God. That's right, yeah. Jesus yeah. is offering all of us today yeah. right relationship with yeah. God. And that's what he's dealing with here. So Jesus then says to these thinking people, right, so that you can know that I have authority on earth to forgive sins, mm. He turns to the paralysed man and he says, rise, get up, roll up your mat and off you go. Wow. Now there must have been quite a stunned silence at that point. What would happen next? Well, this is what happened next. The man jumped up, grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. Wow. You just That's imagine that. Absolutely amazing. Even story. in our day today, yes. if that happened in our churches, and it should, yes, yes. It should be happening in our churches, we would be amazed. We would yes. be stunned. We would be silenced. But we still do hear of people that there are examples um, uh, of. But this should wheelchairs. be happening yes week by week week yes our churches should be crammed that's to right. the doors yeah. with people who need help that's people right. who need healing people who need wholeness yes and that's what church is for it's for people who need to meet with god when mm. we've met with god initially we still want to meet with god which is why we continue to go to church but people who don't know God should be clamouring at our doors to get in. Yeah. And even ripping off our roofs if necessary. Yeah. I imagine it probably happens in Africa. They were all amazed. And they praised God. Mm. We've never seen anything like this before. And they hadn't. Mm. But it was God they praised Yes. It was God they praised. Yes. And today, if you see someone healed, yeah. don't praise the man who prays for that person. Yeah. Don't praise the woman who mm. prays for that person. Praise God, because it's God who does the healing. It's no man who does the healing. Jesus was in this story we've read today, which yeah. is a true story. Jesus is claiming to be God. And can I say to you today, if you are seeking to be forgiven, if you're seeking to come to know God the Father, yeah. you need to come through Jesus Christ, his only son. Mm. And Jesus will bring you to God the Father. 
Now that's open to everyone. Yes, it, it certainly is. I don't know whether there are people this morning that are listening to this and you would like to commit your life to Christ. Then why not give you opportunity now to do that? I'll say a prayer as I'm asking Jesus into my life and if that's you this morning then pray this prayer after me and trust in the God who heals and sets people free in mind, body and spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, that's it, you pray it after me. I ask you to forgive all of my sins and come into my life as Saviour and Lord and give me the power of the Holy Spirit to live this life mm. for you today. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless amen. you. God bless God you. God bless you. And we'll see you again yeah. next time.